Welcome to a quick overview of Blue, the new open source free vernacular book production tool from SIL International. This is an SIL literacy library in Papua New Guinea, where we collect all the known books for each language in the country. Each of these cubbyholes contains all the books for one language. Imagine if your language had so few books that all of them put together could fit in one of these squares. But it gets worse. Some unfortunate languages can share their cubbyhole with a couple of other languages. Now these aren't just extinct languages. Many are alive with boys and girls speaking them as their mother tongue. But our current way of making books leaves them with this, the cubbyhole tragedy. We'd like to see all these children have at least 200 books to read in their own language. That's why we built Bloom. So how does Bloom help us get there? Well, not by working harder as outsiders. And not by waiting for community members to master all the complexity required by general purpose tools. Rather, by making book production so simple that even low-tech community members can be quickly equipped to start growing their own libraries. So how does Bloom do that? First, it uses the proven shell book approach. In Bloom, Shells and other templates are shown as little thumbnails. The user can browse these shells, choose one, and then say, make a book using this template. Bloom makes a copy of the book and adds it to our collection. It then takes us into the Edit tab, where we can translate into the local language. When working on a shell, the source texts that come with the shell appear in these green bubbles. Zooming in, you can see this shell comes with both English and Tokpis and source texts. When we're done, Bloom creates a PDF and formats it for booklet printing. That involves rotating, resizing, and changing page order as needed. The resulting PDF is ready to print or take to a print shop. Remember, we want to foster a culture of authorship in local communities. So Bloom isn't just for shell books. To create a brand new book, we use what Bloom calls book templates. For most simple books, the basic book template is all we need. There is also a picture dictionary template and a template full of pages for making primers. Templates can also be smart, like this wall calendar, which collects the year you want and how you write days and months, and then makes you a new customizable wall calendar. Now let's look at how Bloom handles pictures. Each picture has this button, which brings up the image toolbox. If we start in SIL's free Art of Reading Gallery and we type frog, we can choose from a list of frogs. Notice this box on the right where we see both the copyright and license for this image. Art of Reading has this nice Creative Commons license. Now when you add your own images, you too can enter the copyright and license information and Bloom will embed that information in a standard compliant way into the image file. This is a lifesaver when it comes to verifying that the image is being used legally. In addition to that gallery, you can get images from a scanner, camera, or the file system. Back in your document, Bloom automatically centers and expands the image to fit the allotted space, so we don't have to train people to do that. Similarly, Bloom takes care of adjusting things when you switch from monolingual to bilingual to trilingual books. Bloom also resizes and rearranges things when you want to produce a version for a different paper size or orientation. Now instead of making up its own file format, Bloom uses perhaps the most open and common document format there is, HTML, the language of the web. Once you've made a book, you can open it in your favorite browser. So books created in Bloom will never be stranded in some unreadable format, even after Bloom is long gone. I hope you're seeing how Bloom changes what we can do, compared to just spending weeks teaching people to use a number of general purpose publishing tools, to scan images, to lay out books, to make PDFs, to make booklets, and then hoping they remember all of that a few months later when they actually get time to work on it. Instead, Bloom puts it all in one tool, so people have just one streamlined, durable system to learn. Bloom requires less training and ongoing support because it strips away unnecessary computer complexity. So, for example, users don't have to be trained to use their computer's file system. Bloom just lists all of their books. 
Bloom puts the emphasis on production, not perfection. But it is flexible where flexibility is needed. For example, we saw how Bloom takes just one click to make a multilingual version of a book, just one click to change to a different layout. Bloom can't make just any kind of document. It's all about simple book production, so it can make things like this really easy. Finally, notice that Bloom takes longevity and sharing seriously. It does that by using an open format, HTML, and by making it easy to record bits of intellectual property information in both books and the images they contain. That's all great, but there is a piece missing. Today, Bloom works great for making newly authored books, but imagine the day when we have thousands of shell books in Bloom. That's not going to come from the Bloom programmers, it needs you. Do you have a popular simple book where you work? Putting it into Bloom takes just minutes. If you know how to copy and paste, you know how to make new shells. Together, you can get past this cubbyhole tragedy and grow some libraries. Bloom is free, open source software from SIL International on the Palazzo label. Get it at bloom.palazzo.org.